Medical doctor Femi Oyekon joins me on the news from London via Skype to discuss this. Good to have you join us, Dr. Oyekon. Thank you. So for um, a, a continent that is now battling the COVID-19 pandemic as the rest of the world, um, in Nigeria there is also cholera. I mean, there is one form of disease or the other in different parts of Africa, along with the COVID-19 pandemic. So how concerned and worried should we be um, in, with this new case of Marburg disease? Um, I think, um, first, thank you for making me part of this conversation. Um, I, I think Africa should um, be very concerned um, with the outbreak of um, the Marburg virus. Um, basically because um, if you look at um, the way, if you compare coronavirus and Ebola, you realize that there, there is a global response because China is an economic superpower. Anything that happens in China can get across to the rest of the world in minutes or in days. But in terms of Africa, it is very likely that um, when they say no flight is going to fly from Africa, um, all of that, they, they can just leave Africa to Africa and allow us back to um, our disease by ourselves. So that's why I think that um, that the kind of tension awareness um, um, campaign that coronavirus received may, may not happen in, in the case of this virus because this virus happens to have originated from Africa. And Africa globally is not as economically powerful like China as a nation. So why I would say that the health um, personnel in Africa should take it very serious. And um, although I appreciate what Guinea team have done, the team from Guinea, um, they have isolated every the 150 uh, persons that came in contact um, with this gentleman. And also they raised the alarm to WHO. So at the moment, even though this happens um, August um, 1st or 2nd, um, they are now um, a medical emergency team of European team, the Canada team are already beginning to try things like Remdesiva, other medications in case this becomes um, a, a, a national um, or global issue. There are already trials going on to see what medications can possibly be used to intervene. So, um, we rightly noted earlier that we are also dealing with COVID-19. We understand that this the Marburg virus presents like the Ebola virus, but there are also similar symptoms. For example, the, the issue of the headache, the issue of the cold. Some people do not even know how to differentiate between this. So um, we know that it is just now in Guinea. But talk to us about the differences for people who have COVID-19 and probably are worried if it's the Marburg or have Marburg or are worried if it's the COVID-19. What's the difference? Um, first, um, I'll say that um, the difference is not significant. Um, except for the fact that once it becomes severe, that's when you begin to have hemorrhagic symptoms like spontaneous bleeding. Uh, maybe sometimes in people that have severe symptoms, you may bleed from the nose or maybe things that possibly will not um, cause um, like a slight bruise because um, it is an hemorrhagic fever. It destroys red blood cells. In, in, so it predisposes people to what we call them. Um, DIC disseminated and uh, intravascular coagulopathy. That's still very for the medical team. But from the, for the ordinary people, you are not significantly going to differentiate it except at the very um, microscopic level um, because it, it belongs to the same family like Ebola, transmitted by the same bat. Um, um, bat is also the same, um, 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 what we call intermediary agent. And the same symptoms of fever, cold, cough, all of that. Um, but I, I think uh, those, those are basically the symptoms. It's not significantly different from either Ebola or coronavirus, except at microscopic level, where you now be able to distinguish between this is Ebola, this is um, um, Marburg, this is um, coronavirus. It, it's usually the symptoms are kind of overlap. Hmm. And that, that's really worrying because now people really can't even tell the difference as to whether it's COVID-19 or Marburg. But let's look at the fact that there is no treatment and there is no vaccine. Um, it, this is the first time it is presenting in West Africa. There have been cases in the past in South Africa, in Kenya, Uganda, um, Democratic Republic of Congo, but never really in West Africa. So 
Nigeria, Nigeria is also in West Africa. What should Nigeria be doing now in terms of ensuring that we do not record any case of this? Well, I'll say that um, what, what China did is possibly what Nigeria should do. Nations from um, like Guinea and other nations, if Nigeria contemporarily at the moment say no flights from Guinea, no flights from neighboring nations should come into Nigeria. Except if you look at or, or, and if you look at the fact that what economic um, importance are uh, we going to now open our borders to those nations? And uh, you look at it and say that we are better, we are better be safe than say sorry to our citizens. If we say um, no flights from Guinea, no, uh, no, let, let, let's put some boundaries. Um, Nigerians are going to be safer, and we are not going to lose, lose so much economically. Why not let's take this drastic step from first, uh, in the first place? If you know. Um, even when we said no flight from Italy, from Spain, from Europe, from China, even though that was going to make economically huge impact on Nigeria, but credit to the Buhari team, they, they were able to put up a lot, a lot of resistance to ensure that even when coronavirus was at, uh, at its peak, uh, Nigeria was um, s uh, Nigeria was safe to some extent. So, if the same measures can be put in place, uh, I think that. Um, it's very unlikely that the Marble virus is going to get to Nigeria. How, how soon should we do that? Or should we wait for um, a significant number of cases or a significant number, a number of cases before we begin to suspend flights or, and, and you know, probably close the border between Nigeria and Guinea? Um, I, I'll say that um, to, to a very large extent, um, I possibly may not be able to put a time frame on what um, the, uh, how soon. But I know that we have very competent hands, somebody like uh, Professor Nahire, um, Senator Mamora. They, they are very competent team that can guide Nigeria health to the right direction. So they, they possibly may be able to be, they will be in the best position to determine um, how soon we are going to make some drastic changes as regards to um, cross migration between Nigeria and Guinea and all those um, other West African countries. But at the moment, I'll say that in terms of globally, it is not yet in the yellow or red um, alert. So we can still watch and see, and hopefully, and that hopefully, I pray that it doesn't spread. Uh, that's possibly what I can say. So let's talk about um, containment strategy in in um, Guinea and containment and then prevention as well. What should Guinea be doing to contain this? And then what can people do to ensure um, they do not also contract the virus? Well, I'll say that um, for Guinea, it, 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 it will be priority for them to first. What they have done so far is applaudable. Every one of the 150 persons that came out in contact with this gentleman are all in self-isolation, and they have an health team that has been going to each of the houses to ensure that they, they are not spiking temperatures, they are well hydrated, they are, are not showing any form of acute ailment. I think that's the first step. The second step is to, to, to ensure that the testing kit that is going to isolate a marble from Ebola from Corona is made available so that as Many people that may start coming to the hospital with fever, and you're not too sure if this is Corona or Marburg or Ebola, you need to do those tests as soon as possible. And as 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 once you're able to um, isolate those um, samples and see that this is positive, you, you raise global alarm so that you can possibly generate help. Because uh, at the moment, what, what we know that has been effective in some people who have had it in the past is generous hydration, um, from, from temperature control, and um, emergency care in a very um, standard hospital has been known to help people with um, some of these um, acute ailments that has not um, that don't have um, medication to control them at the moment. We'll see how this plays out and we we'll hope that more awareness is done as, re as regards this. Thank you so much for talking to us, Medical Dr. Femi Uyeko. You're welcome. Thank you.